Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Victoria Garrick and today I'm gonna to be sharing with you things that I do that help me maintain a positive body image. I do want to say that I'm using the term positive body image just because overall these things help me keep a non-negative opinion or feeling towards my body and myself, which I guess as a result would mean it's making me feel positive. But at the same time, it's just making me feel neutral. If you want to stop hating your body, but you also can't love your body yet, there's this middle ground, there is a middle ground, where you're just like, huh, my body is my body, and you're just neutral about it. So these things help me err on the side of positive and neutral. So hopefully you guys can try some of these, they're super easy. Because of this weather, I'm kind of getting like rainy day, stay at home cozy vibes, and I'll kind of take you around my house as I discuss things I do to maintain positive slash neutral body image. Also, if you have not already, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. There is great stuff on this channel and great stuff coming next week. Okay, so the first thing that I don't do, which helps me maintain positive slash neutral body image, is weigh myself. I don't weigh myself. I haven't weighed myself in about whew, three years. It's been three years since I knew what I weighed. When I go to the doctor's office, I'm just like, hi. Would you mind not telling me what I weigh? Thanks so much. And then I just get on and then they don't tell me. Not weighing myself has been absolutely huge in being able to like myself more each and every day. I actually don't even have a scale. Like I don't even own one. My mom, however, actually has one. So let's go, let's go find that, play with that. It can be in this scene while I actively hate on it. Okay, I'm in my parents' room. Does anyone else get like spooked when they go into their parents' room? Not spooked, but like just like, oh my gosh, I better not leave a trace that I was in here. Anyways, that's just me, forget that I said that. Okay, here we are, here we are. Why isn't, why is this thing like freaking spooky? Why won't it give me a number? Oh, it's, oh, it is giving numbers. You guys just can't see. 9.7. We gotta fuel up, bad boy. Okay, I'm just gonna sit on the toilet and vent. Oh my God, hey guys, it's me. Oh, oh my God, this lighting. I should just film videos up on my mom's toilet. Back to the scale. I just realized that I was essentially stepping on this device and asking it if I could like myself that day. Literally, that's the question, right? Is you, you're stepping on and you're not actually saying it. You might not even be thinking it, but what you're really doing is looking for approval in a number. And to me, I had specific numbers. And if it wasn't those numbers, I was really upset with myself. And it didn't matter how I looked. It didn't matter how I felt. If the number on the scale wasn't what I wanted, I was upset with myself and it ruined my entire day and affected everything I was eating. So I just got tired of letting the decision and the validation be on something else that wasn't me. It's truly been such a game changer. I feel so freed from it, especially as someone who was obsessed with calorie counting and numbers and all those little things. So to not know what I weigh is truly liberating. The second thing I don't do, which allows me to have positive slash neutral body image, say it with me again, is I don't look in full body mirrors a ton. I look in them, but not a ton. Let me break it down. Every time I looked into a full body mirror, I was most likely going to stand there, look myself up and down, and say like 10 things I hated about myself and then I continued on with my day. It was always negative. Like I was actively looking into the mirror being like, mm, what's wrong with me? This should be smaller. I hate that this isn't long enough. This doesn't look curvy enough. And I would just find things I didn't like. It was just a negative experience and it just brought negative body image and energy into my day. So I just decided I'm gonna stop doing it. And actually shout out to my volleyball self. Where is she? Here. The first time I actually started doing this was in my locker room at USC was I just noticed I always put on my spandex, I always put on my uniform and then I go stand in the mirror and I pull my spandex down and I push my legs back and then I look at my jersey from the side and it's always just like, what's not good enough? What can be better? So I stopped doing it. I just put on my clothes. I looked myself up and down to make sure it matched or whatever and then I walked up to the gym and that was that the tough thing though is when i'm 
in my closet and then if I look to the left I can see my body and like I've caught myself sometimes being like oh I look bloated or I look this today and I'm just like nope nope we're not looking we're not doing that and I redirect. I will say if you are someone that does positive affirmations and you need to look in the mirror of course whatever floats your boat please do that but I'm just giving you guys my tips. I'm not a positive affirmation person. I prefer to take the route of like, I'm not going to let my appearance be that important to me or the priority. So, okay, I'll move on. That was a lot. Number three, and this one is truly a game changer. I think that this is just beneficial for anyone who's trying to develop a better relationship with their body, the way they talk about themselves, think about themselves, think about food is curate a feed that is gonna be supportive, encouraging, and make you feel good about yourself. Curate a feed that makes you feel good about yourself. I legitimately, this was sophomore year of college. A lot of you guys know, if someone were to ask you, pop quiz, what was the darkest year of Victoria's life? My true fans would say, sophomore year of college, <laughs> dark. So let me take you through a little tutorial of what it would be like to curate this feed. The first thing I did was I go to my following. So all the people I'm following on Instagram, we can start with Instagram. You can start with any social media account. Be looking for people that make you don't feel good about yourself or they post things that are irrelevant or prioritize things that you don't or constantly making you about body image. I unfollowed all the bikini accounts, unfollowed the bikini accounts. Kardashians, unfollowed them for a while too. I think they're really entertaining. I love their fashion. I love Stormy, she's the cutest, but for a while, I had to unfollow because the body type, the makeup, the beauty was a lot for me. It made me feel like I wasn't good enough. It just makes such a big difference. Like if I'm pulling out my phone and seeing this every day, I'm going to feel some type of way. But if I open up my phone and I see this every day, I might feel some type of way, but a, a better some type. And this is an important thing I want to say too, is like, there are people who, if like, um, how do I say this? If a girl who's beautiful posts a picture of herself at the beach, she has every right to do that. If I see that picture though, and it makes me feel bad about myself, I have every right not to want to see those pictures. So it's not like I'm saying that this girl sucks or she's hurting people. No, like she's just living her life. Like she's pretty cool. For me, that doesn't help me. So I don't want to follow. So I guess what I'm trying to say is like no one's at fault in this situation. I hate when people are trolling me and they comment things like, it's not their fault that you're insecure. And I'm like, dude, no, no one said it was their fault. I'm not saying it's their fault. I'm just acknowledging that these things do make me feel insecure. And so I don't want to feel insecure. So I'm not going to do these things. Does that make sense? I really hope it does. And then another thing you can do, which some of you guys might not know this. I recently figured this out. I don't know how I recently figured this out. My job is social media. This is embarrassing, but you can follow hashtags. So if you want to look up the hashtag self love journey, there's 800,000 posts and you can click follow. And now I'm following that hashtag and I'm going to see people all over the world who are posting things about their self love journey from different backgrounds, different stories, different cultures. I have been following the intuitive eating hashtag and I've absolutely loved it because it throws into my feed content about intuitive eating. Actually, let me see if one of them pops up. Okay. I found one random ways healing your relationship with food in your body can show up in your week. And then I swipe and it says, being okay when someone puts the wrong milk in your coffee, enjoying a meal someone made for you knowing it's not, you don't know exactly what's in it. So let's see, this is super cute and like, love this and it's on my feed. So definitely subscribe to hashtags that you like. And also here is a list of fabulous creators that I think are super awesome and post uplifting, inspiring things. And if you guys are looking for more people to follow, definitely hit them up. And along with this, if you don't follow my Instagram, you can totally do that. And I'll add the username as well. I'm debating if I should do this final one in this position or if this is really weird. <laughs> I have this idea of like, I'll be laying off the bed and I'll have the books right here. And I'm just looking at this and I'm like, uh, no. Consume resources that help me and teach me things and educate me and keep me curious, learning and thinking. That was a lot. I'm someone who is very go-getter type A. One of my favorite quotes is just 
make it happen. So when I finally accepted, <laughs> I have big issues with food. I'm depressed. I have anxiety. Like when I realized that I was at rock bottom, I was like, how can I climb out of this? How can I make this manageable? Something that helped a lot was consuming content and information and using resources that were helpful to me. Obviously, one of the big things I did was go to therapy. However, not a lot of people have that option and it's the worst thing ever like we need everyone to have the ability to access that if they need it and then sadly that's not the case while therapy was huge for me the other stuff i did like the books i read talking to people finding a mentor journaling like those things were just as important so this stuff is extremely valuable as you guys can see how many books i have here like it's no joke and i can't even find most of the books. Sometimes when I read books, I give them to friends, so I don't have a lot still here, but here are three books that I think you should really look into. Women, Food, and God is an incredible book by Janine Roth. A lot of you guys know her other book, Breaking Free from Emotional Eating, um, is what I read that like flipped the switch in my mind for me. But this is another great book by her called Women, Food, and God. It's a bestseller. Intuitive Eating. I'm currently reading this. This is the intuitive eating Bible. Like This is the first time intuitive eating was even coined and discussed. It's by Evelyn Tribole and Elise Resch. This is just an incredible book about intuitive eating, the science behind it, all that good stuff. So awesome. Another option though, and this is by one of the authors of this book, it's called The Intuitive Eating Workbook for Teens. This one is awesome. I got this just to explore. Like I'm always looking for things I can promote and show to you guys in case it's helpful. So I got this book for that reason. I opened it. It's awesome. Look at this page internal food police statement so you eat way too much you have no control you're always wanting sweets what's wrong with you so these interning police statements and then how it makes you feel and you're kind of learning about intuitive eating while getting the chance to write things down and do this workbook i think this is absolutely incredible and one more thing on top of books there are also podcasts there's incredible podcasts the authors of these books go on podcasts. People you follow on Instagram that you love have podcasts. They go on podcasts. So just go to iTunes, Spotify, any podcast app, and just type in the names of people you want to learn from and see if they've been on shows or type in the topic emotional eating or positive body image and see what episodes come up. Read the description. Listen. If you don't like it, next episode. And those are all free. So you can receive that wisdom for free. I have had people on my podcast who cost thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to speak places publicly, but they come on RealPod for free and you can listen to RealPod for free. The biggest thing about this point is you get a different perspective and a different view. You get to challenge the system. Like when I first learned about intuitive eating from a book, I was just like, oh my gosh, this is a totally different way to eat. It's nothing like I've ever seen in the health magazine, the tabloids. The sports, like it's nothing like I've seen ever. This is a completely new way to approach life. And I personally now think it is the best way to approach food and the way I approach food. And I had to learn it from a book because mainstream media and diet culture don't want me doing that because then they lose money. <laughs> Learning, consuming new information, utilizing resources is so important to allow you to create your own things that work for you, right? This is just what works for me. but. Give yourself that opportunity to learn. Well, those are all of my tips I wanted to share today. I hope that some of these were helpful to you. I hope that they're ones you wanna try. Comment down below and let me know which of these you think was most helpful for you and you're most excited to try. And also, do you have any tips? Everyone does things differently. Comment down below with some things that have helped you and then this way we can make the comment section just a really positive, uplifting, great section about ways we can all have better, positive, and also neutral body image. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Once again, don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel and you can follow me on my various social media platforms. And, and, and don't forget, next week, very special, very special video coming out and the special announcement about what that video is about, which I'm sure most of you know because I'm not good at keeping secrets and I've made it really obvious, is going to be posted on my Instagram this Sunday. Mm -hmm.